Hi, I'm Susan Gantner, and welcome to my video on starting a debug session with RDI. So we're going to talk about two different ways of doing this. I'm going to start a debug session first using my very favorite method, which is the service entry points. Because there are occasions where service entry points don't work, I'm also going to show you my second favorite way of starting a debug session, which is using a job configuration. So I'm going to start with service entry points first. Um, I'm in remote systems over here. I've got my library, expand my library, found the program that I want to debug. I right click on it and say debug service entry, set service entry point. It then pops up and says that it did it. It also confirms down here in the service entry point view that this user profile, that's my user profile, when that user profile calls this program from this library, in any job, anywhere on the system, it's going to stop that job, do effectively a start service job, start debug, switch me into debug mode over here in my RDI, and I'll be all set to debug the program. So it's waiting now for that to occur. So what I need to do is to not have it wait any longer. I'm going to go over to my green screen. Now, this green screen that I'm using for this demo is not the way I normally run. I decided it was going to be easier to shoot the video if I have if I use the built-in um, emulator here. There's nothing special about the fact that it's running in RDI that makes this connection. The connection is all made on the host through the service entry point. So this could have been a completely separate 5250 emulation session. It could have been a batch job. It could have been a call from a browser screen. It could have been anything. Any way to call that program that I could. So I'm just going to key in call debug RPG4 and press enter. Now it's going to pause for a moment while this, the host detects the fact this service entry point has been hit. It then switched me over. I didn't do that, by the way. I didn't actually switch over to the debug perspective. It did it for me. And if that source code had not already been open, it would have opened up the source code and been ready then for me to set some breakpoints or to step through the code or whatever I might need to do. So all I wanted to do was show you how to get the session started. Maybe there'll be another video at some point on what you do once you want, after you get the session started, but just to go ahead and end this one, I'm going to hit the, the go button here and let that run. And the program is now terminated. Now, to show you another way to start a debug session, I'm going to go back to my RSE and delete, or remove, rather, this service entry point. So the service entry point is now gone, and this time I'm going to do a different way of starting a debug session using a debug configuration, and specifically the one that I like to use as a job configuration. It seems to work for most any situation I've ever needed, and it's easier to just stick with one option, I think, rather than lot, worry about lots of others. Now, I happen to know that it's a, a job, the job that I, where I want to call this program from is one of my jobs with my user profile. So I'm going to select my active jobs, and it's an interactive job. Um, I happen to know that this is the job that I'm interested in. If I didn't know, of course, I could go over into the job and do display job and figure that out. But um, I'm pretty sure that this actually is the job I want. So I'm going to right click on here and I'm going to say debug prompt, I be my job. Now the reason I want to do the prompt is that I want to be able to put the program name in. So what's happened so far is that I've simply told it the connection and job. I mean, I told it indirectly by selecting the job through this connection over here. Um, it has named this thing my job. I could change that name to something else if I wanted to. I'll just leave it like that for now. I do, however, want to add the program that I plan to debug. And let's see if I can get it keyed in here right. One of the things that I don't do terribly well is keying stuff in, right? There we go. I think I've got it. Um, I want you to notice the step into box that is checked by default. Uh, that means that it will stop when it, uh, on the first line of code when we get there. And also, perhaps more importantly, notice the update production files because that's not on by default unless you have set it as a preference. Uh, you may sometimes have to scroll down in order to see some of these options, especially that bottom one, the update production file, so I like to call people people's attention to that. So I'll save my configuration, 
by hitting the apply button and then if I want to actually use it for debugging right this moment I can now hit the debug button. At that point it's going to connect to the host. It's going to switch me over into debug mode. Again I didn't do that. It automatically switched over to the debug perspective and it's now telling me to do two things. I need to use step or resume to continue my debug session and then I need to start my application on the server. But of course before I can do either of those two things I have to get rid of this message. So I need to use step or resume, start the application. Those are the two things I need to do. So I'm just going to use step here, that's the step button, in order to start my application. Because I'm using the emulator in the Remote System Explorer, I'm going to click over here, press F9 to bring my call back, and press enter. It brings me back into debug automatically again, puts, puts the source out there, again, ready for me then to do whatever stepping or breakpoints or whatever else I need to do. So, got to the same place a different way, this time via a job configuration. Now I'm going to go ahead and let this run terminate one more time because I want to show you one more little wrinkle. If for some reason it's not feasible or it doesn't work for you or you just don't like using the jobs uh, interface here in Remote System Explorer to do that, I can always create a job configuration manually. I could use the menu option under the run option, but I tend to use the debug um, button up here and the little menu arrow next to it. There's the my job configuration that we cre that it created for us last time. But if I come down here to debug configurations, you can see that I have lots of different options that I have available to me. So I have my have you my debug job. There's my job configuration that was created last time. If I double click on Ivy My Debug Job, it gives me a new one. Now at this point, I can give it a name, so I can call it uh, Susan's Demo Job Config. And I need to ch switch the connection to the, whichever the connection that I'm currently using. I need to find the job. Now remember, we found the job using remote systems before. This time we're going to find the job a different way. We're going to do a browse, use this browse option here. It plugged in star current for the user profile. Obviously I could change that if it was a different user profile. So it's going to look for any jobs uh, of any name and number with my user profile and bring them up here. Now I'm pretty sure that this is the one that I actually want. You can see I've got quite a list of them here. Um, and so I'm going to select that so it plugs in all that ugly stuff for the job there, which is nice. I don't need to worry about that. Now I add the program in. and the name of the program like so. Now here's an example where the uh, scroll bar is such or the size of my window is such that I couldn't see any of these options down here so again I'll call your attention to the fact that you may need to scroll down to see some of that stuff or if you've got everything set up in your preferences the way you like you may not have to worry about that. So I'm just saying apply here. It's going to save that uh, configuration and then debug because I'm ready to use that configuration right now. Again, it throws me over into the debug perspective, gives me the instructions that I need to step or resume, and then start the application on the server. So this time I'll use the resume button just to be different. Go back over to my RSE just because that's where my emulator is. Um, again, it could be anywhere. Uh, call it from here and now it has me back to the same position I was in. I can now do my stepping or whatever else that I need to do throughout my debug session. So there you go. You've seen a couple of different ways to start a debug session and a couple of different options on how to create a job configuration if you need to. I hope this has helped. Happy debugging.